Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the module 1 of mod, uh, microcontroller super important questions. These questions are taken from the previous papers uh, and these are the most repeated ones, don't miss any of these questions. And if you have any doubts you can DM me on Instagram here. And before starting please do like and subscribe, it helps make modules like this. So without wasting more time, let's get started. The first question is explain the architecture of ARM embedded device with a neat diagram. Okay. So firstly you have to make this diagram. And this diagram is divided into four parts. Okay, so this is the middle part AHB APB bridge, and after that, you have the top left part, top right part. Okay, so here is the ARM processor. Okay, so this is the first part about the processor you have to write. Second is the memory controller. Okay, and memory controller and interrupt controller are two types of controllers. Okay, after that, we have the bottom left part, which is the real time clock and serial UARTs. And here is where the input and output goes. Okay, input and output is handled by these peripherals. Okay, as you can see, the peripherals are in the blank uh, boxes. And Ethernet and counter timers, these are for the network connectivities. Okay, the same thing you have to write here. There are four main hardware parts. The ARM processor controls the embedded device for different processing uh, calculations, and the controllers coordinate important functional box of the system. And two commonly found controllers are interrupt controller and memory controller. Peripheral device provides input output capability and bus is used to communicate between different parts of the devices. The lines which you can see are the bus. Okay, so you just have to make this diagram and explain the four components. Okay. Going to the next point one question, which is mention the difference between microcontroller and micro microprocessor and risk and sys. Okay. So microcontroller and microprocessor, what is the difference? So microprocessor, it does not have the RAM, ROM and input output pins. And the opposite is true for this. Okay. So you just have to remember one part and the opposite will be true for this. Okay. So here it usually uses its pin as a bus to interface and it, it doesn't use it here. So basically you have to remember just five points. Okay, any five points which you feel comfortable with, you can remember. Microprocessor are generally capable of being built into bigger general purpose applications, but here it is used for dedicated specific applications. Generally do not have power saving system. It has power saving system and uses the less power. Okay. And the overall cost of the system is high and overall cost is less here. Okay. And speed is uh, 1 gigahertz and the speed here is 8 megahertz to 50 megahertz and microprocessor are based on one human architecture and microcontroller based on hardware architecture next is risk and CISC. CISC means complex instruction set computing and risk means reduced instruction set computing these are simple instructions and these by the name itself you can understand this is the complex instructions emphasis is on the hardware emphasis is in the software and complex instructions reduce instructions and the instructions are executed by the software or microprogrammer processor here it's executed by the hardware okay so this is of the instructions are executed here via the hardware and here the instructions are executed via the program the software okay but emphasis is on the hardware here and emphasis on the software here here it's the variable format instruction here we have the fixed format instructions many instructions and many addressing modes fixed instructions and few addressing modes Conditional jump is based on status register. Conditional base is based on bit anywhere in the memory. Memory reference is embedded in many instructions. It is embedded in load and store in the risk. Okay. So these are the differences. Any five you can remember. Next is explain in detail current program status register CPSR. Okay. So CPSR is the current program status register. At this point of time, what the program is executing, different flags will be activated and deactivated based on that, that status. Okay. So that status is shown by a register called current program status register. So it's divided into four parts, flags, status, extension, and control. Okay. So conditional flags are here, NZCV, and here we have the uh, control uh, bits which is IFT and mode is there which is a processor mode and in between gray area we have it is used for the future extensions okay so current program data register is a special purpose register in ARM architecture processor to hold information about CPU state how is the state of CPU what is the arithmetic logic unit status flags interrupt disable bits and processor mode so NZCV IFT what are the full forms N is negative flag in case of a result of an operation if it is negative means this flag will this flag will become true zero means if any answer we get as zero this will become true carry means if any addition we got carry it will become true and in sorry in subtraction and in flow flag means if there is an overflow in the signed operations I means interrupt request disable bit it disables the interrupt request FIQ means it disables the FIQ inter, uh, interrupt requests fast interrupt requests T is the thumb state bit 0 for arm state and 1 for thumb it is used to denote is the thumb state bit on or off 
mode the processor mode which mode it is currently in user mode FIQ IRQ supervisor totally seven modes are there that also we will discuss okay so how CPSR works in practice whenever an interrupt occurs means a uh, program is executing normally whenever interrupt occurs it calls the interrupt and comes back and uh, resumes for where it has stopped okay so that is how uh, the interrupt works okay whenever interrupt occurs the current status program status register is saved into SPSR okay means see current program will always point to what is point, uh, happening currently so when we are executing normally at this point it has to leave and go for different current so this current where it will be stored this current status will be stored in SPSR and this will be executed and when this comes back here it will take from SPSR it has current content okay and the processor switches the modes disable request and executes the handler after handling CPSR is restored from SPSR as I told you after the handling is done SPSR will copy back to the CPSR and CPSR will re resume its normal execution next is with a neat diagram explain arm core data flow model now if they ask about the data flow model you have to draw this diagram where the data starts from here and it goes to a sign extend format and then read operation happens which goes to the register file and from here the different operations happen like for example if there are two inputs a and b both will go to the uh, mac and the alu based on the requirement or it, it goes to a barrel shifter if it's required and after that also the address register is taken into consideration from where it has to execute and the address will be uh, incremented to point out to the next instruction and the uh, pc will be there program control will be pointing to where the program is also the, res uh, the result will be going back to the register file so this is the core data flow model okay so here it represents how data moves inside the ARM processor during the instruction execution. It is built for risk which is reduced instruction set computer focusing on simplicity and performance. So instruction decoder, it decodes and fetches the instruction and whether it is add load whatever the instruction is, it identifies and controls the flow accordingly. That is done by instruction decoder. Next is the register file R0 to R15 which you saw. So here it all it holds all the general purpose registers like R15 holds the program counter, R14 holds the link register and R13 holds the stack pointer and the outputs are also there RN, RM and RD three types of registers so all of these registers are stored in the register file next is sign extend block it extends the immediate values from 8 to 32 bit okay and barrel shifter it performs shifting or rotation operation before uh, giving it to the ALU okay if anything is to be performed ALU does all the calculations whatever the operation needs to be performed MAC is multiply accumulate unit okay means multiplication and accumulation operation is done in the Mac okay address register plus incrementer it stores the address next address what it has to point and it uh, increments when one address is executed it will point to the next one when this is executed it will point to the next one and so on data flow and control uh, flow so data flow instruction comes in decoded operation operands fetched operation executed and result is written back in control flow instruction decoder and CPSR is taken into consideration and the conclusion is ARM core, data, ARM core data flow model demonstrates highly efficient modular structure where every instruction goes through fetch, decode and execute. Okay, this replaces and repeat. ALU and MAC operate on data from the registers and immediate values. These two are the places from where the data is taken. Barrel shifter enhances flexibility with zero cycle shift operations. Means, suppose I have the input, I want to make some change to the input before giving to the ALU. So I can use barrel shifter for doing the same instead of going back and changing and again coming. Okay. It is optimized for speed, low power and embedded systems. Explain the different processor modes in ARM7. There are seven processor modes. The first one is the user mode okay this is the mode which we use usually when we run any application okay that is used for normal application code okay and FIQ FIQ is nothing but fast interrupt handling if any request is to be handled fastly we'll be using FIQ mode this is the normal interrupt request regular interrupts okay supervisor mode it calls OS okay and software is interrupted and it handles automatically about mode memory fault hand handling if anything error happens it goes to the abort mode undefined mode undefined instruction if it is encountering it will go to the undefined mode and system means os level operations so user mode used for normal program execution with restricted access to system resource fiq mode handles high speed in touch with minimal latency using additional bank registers irq mode manages standard interrupt requests from peripherals using separate stack registers okay 
it handles the interrupt request from the peripherals means input output places and usually if we if an exam uh, program is going on we give an input okay means we type k in the keyboard so what happens it goes inside it that is uh, that interrupt happens that is the interrupt request mode and supervisor mode a privileged mode entered on software interrupt mainly for os level operations abort mode triggered during the memory access violations and to handle errors like invalid address access okay and undefined mode activated when the processor encounters undefined instruction and system mode a privileged mode like a user mode but with full access to system resources used by the os okay user cannot access the os resources but if uh, we go to the system mode we can then access the uh, resources okay next question is explain four major rules of risk design philosophy the first one is instructions risk processor have reduced number of instruction classes okay and in contrast six sysc will be having more and it is uh, variable also pipeline the processing of instruction is broken down into smaller units and can be executed in parallel by pipelines registers store the data okay whenever uh, something uh, instruction is executed the data or the address is stored by the register load instruction load store in uh, architecture whatever is to be performed it is stored and uh, loaded into the memory okay by the registers in contrast with the sysc design the data processing operation can act on memory directly in the risk it will store in the registers and then it will be transferred to the memory okay explain pipelining in arm okay pipeline is a mechanism in the risk processor which is used to execute instructions parallelly okay so what happens here is suppose there are three type of instructions fetch decode and execute so here in the time cycle one fetch is happening and add is happening here in the cycle two after add is done it goes to the decode and parallelly fetch is doing the subtra subtraction in cycle three subtraction goes to the decode and add goes to the execute uh, operation while compare is taken as the next operation which is fetch so parallelly many things are happening here that is called as the pipeline okay if you found this video helpful, please do like and subscribe. It helps me make more videos like this. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.